Hey guys, even here and we're starting this video with a Juan Morel 5 days out of Mr. Olympia physique update and this guy is vascular as hell. His body is looking like a roadmap. If Mr. Olympia was a vascularity competition, he would win the show. He is winning vascularity competitions all day long. I mean, look at this. <laughs> this is crazy, but no. Vascularity is not really a metric. It doesn't equal conditioning. As a matter of fact, most Mr. Olympia winners weren't super vascular. Phil Heath, not really. Jay Cutler, not so much. Ronnie Coleman. Dorian Yates was very grainy, but veiny, I guess, too, but not like this. He didn't have these big popping veins like one has right here. I don't even want to mention the old guys like Arnold or Lee Haney. They definitely weren't at this level of vascularity. I mean, they weren't on this level of conditioning. So even if they were genetically vascular like this, they wouldn't show it because their level of body fat wasn't as low as it is of guys today. Neither was the level of muscularity. In order to have this kind of vascularity, you need to have very dense, thick muscle that will push the veins close to your tight and conditioned skin. And this is what Juan Morel has, but on top of that, he has naturally very large blood vessels. <laughs> and I hope he is not sick. I hope this is not uh, Varoche's veins. It doesn't really seem like it. I think this is just genetic. And it looks cool. It looks really awesome. If you wanted to write a villain for a comic book, you would add a lot of veins to his body. This physique really reminds me of that uh, old Batman movie from 1997 with Uma Thurman. And there was a Bane character, actually, and uh, he looked something like this, only green. If you guys remember that, if you are in your early 20s like me or older, you will probably remember that. And if you are one of the millennials, you probably don't know who I'm talking about, but yeah, it's an old movie. Anyways, Juan Morel, five days out, looking insane, looking full as a house, jacked, shredded, veiny, <laughs> veiny as a roadmap. I made a video about him uh, actually taking 6th place, cracking the top 6 at a Mr. Olympia and that was actually before I had any idea that Sean Roden might be out. So right now with this lineup, even with his horrible, horrible quads, I think he has a chance to dominate that stage because when he won the New York Pro, all of those guys who beat him had really good legs and he was still able to destroy them because of his super dominant upper body. If this guy had legs, he would be battling for the title. He would be in top three, probably. But unfortunately, he doesn't have great quads. And for that reason, top six is like the best case scenario. But I'm pretty sure he's gonna have great results to Mr. Olympia. This is his year. He won the New York Pro, and before that, he won the South America Arnold Classic. And now, Mr. Olympia is coming. He's looking very dominant. And I think top six is what he's gonna get. Top six, yeah. Alright, so next we have a video of Phil Heath training once again at 5 days out of Mr. Olympia. At this point it is known, it's well known that he's not gonna do it. But still, that doesn't mean we're gonna ignore Phil Heath. He is the 7 times Mr. Olympia and most likely he'll be competing again next year. But let's take a look at his physique. And so, he is looking fresh. He really looks relaxed. He looks like he needed this kind of a break, you know, taking one year off after so many years of competing in a row. And not only competing, but training with a purpose and eating and pushing the envelopes in so many different senses. And so hopefully this break will help him improve his physique and come actually better next year in 220. Now, will he be competing again, ever again? Who the hell knows? Maybe not. Maybe he really is retired. Maybe that Dexter Jackson comment was actually true. Maybe he is retired for good. It's possible. But I would really hate to see that. And I wouldn't really like to see him curling, you know, doing biceps. We already know, we're already convinced that he has one of the best arms in the history of bodybuilding. That's not a problem, really. What is the problem is his midsection. And I would rather, I would much rather like to see him doing some vacuums. It wouldn't be as attractive, but it would mean that he's trying to improve on his biggest weakness. That's his stomach. The other top guys are really working on their stomachs because they all realize it's the biggest problem of today's bodybuilding. Phil Heath just keeps ignoring that, like it's not a problem, like something else is the problem. It wasn't conditioning, it wasn't anything else, it's just the stomach. If he was able to control his stomach a little bit better, not perfect, but if it was like it was in 2017, for example, he would still win the Mr. Olympia because he is the most complete, the most muscular bodybuilder on that stage and the most conditioned and everything. The only thing was the stomach, everybody knows that. And I would really like to see him working on his stomach, 
rather than watching him working on his biceps. Just fix the stomach, come back, take your sandal back and dominate for another 5 years or even more. It's possible, really. Okay, so next, back to more relevant topics, we have a physique update of Luke Sando from his hotel room probably, at 5 days out, and Luke is looking very good, very good actually. He was looking something like this before the Arnold, I think he didn't look this good before Tampa, so it seems like he's gonna bring it, it seems like he's gonna bring it on, and if he brings it, if he brings that conditioning that he brought at the Arnold 2019, top 5, top 5 for him, yeah, I think so. He will be behind Rolly Winkler, Brandon Curry, William Bonek. Now, if he brings conditioning, Cedric doesn't do that, he's gonna beat Cedric. And if he brings good conditioning, he may even beat Dexter. As far as Bonek, I don't really see that happening. So, best case scenario, he can even crack the top four. But I don't think it's gonna happen that he beats both Cedric and Dexter. I think the chances are one of these two guys are gonna beat him. So top 5, I think that's the most realistic for him if he brings his A game. Hopefully he will do it, hopefully he will bring something better than 2019 Arnold. Maybe he's gonna bring his best shape ever and, you know, make us drop our jaws and actually win the Mr. Olympia. Snatch that sando. It's freaking possible. This year it is possible. It was never before something like this, but this year without a defending champion, without Phil Heath, without Big Remy, without Kai Green. It is possible, it's just a wide open door. Anybody can grab that sand though, and I hope it's gonna be something surprising. I would really love that. I mean, it doesn't really have to be the Mr. Olympia winner, that can be something logical, but I want to see some crazy placements. I want to see some of the last known guys make their breakthrough at the Mr. Olympia 2019. That would be amazing, and I'm hoping for that. Since I have already mentioned Kai Green, I noticed this video from him on his Instagram, he uploaded this yesterday, but this is an older video, of course, he's just trying to sell his ebooks. Mr. Olympia is approaching and Kai Green is using the opportunity to make more money, of course. But uh, yeah, this was just a video, an older video. And look at his biceps here. This is a lot of oil. This is a lot of oil. Well, I mean, take a look at it. Look at how unnatural the shape is. When he relaxes the arm, it's just popping out. This is a crazy amount of oil, I'm sure of that. And if you guys think it's not... I don't know, I don't know what you're looking at, but this does not look like real muscle. I think he has a bunch of oil in his biceps and his triceps as well. And who knows where else? Probably his upper chest too and his forearms maybe and shoulders as well. Probably cows. Who the hell knows, but I mean look at his body. He's starting to remind me of Rich Piana. But Kai is a bodybuilder, a professional bodybuilder. He did it properly, so you cannot really be sure what it is, but it is obvious to me. If you were wondering what he is up to lately, is he gonna compete anytime soon? Probably not, since he is uh, acting in a new movie. It is an Indian movie, an action movie, the name of it is Pogaru. I believe uh, Martin Ford already acted in one of these movies, and now it's Kai Green. It's an action movie, and uh, Kai Green fits in uh, perfectly in these kind of roles, with his charisma and with his kind of body, and with his kind of uh, looks overall, I mean, with his hair and everything. So, I mean, good for him, he's gonna make a lot of money from this, I'm sure, but uh, bodybuilding misses him, he's one of the biggest talents of all time, it's really a pity, it's really a shame that he gave up on it, maybe his body is not doing that well, maybe he doesn't think he's that good to compete at a high level, who the hell knows, who the hell knows, but unfortunately, most likely, no Kai Green this year. Yesterday we got that posing video of Big Remy that went absolutely viral, I made a video about it, but today we have a new photo. Now it's not really much different from the video, but we can see the legs. We can see the legs and they are huge, as they always were, so nothing really revealing here, nothing illuminating, nothing new, just a big old Big Remy. And uh, he's looking great, he's looking like he's prepping, he looks like he's a couple of weeks out of something. Now what show is that gonna be? Maybe it's gonna be that new show, Yamamoto show in Italy. Maybe something else, who the hell knows. But uh, he looks like he's prepping. I don't think he would be doing this uh, for no reason. Prepping for a show really stresses you out. It's really a big stress on your body and you have only so many preps in your tank. Unless you are Dexter Jackson, this guy can compete forever. But not everybody is like Dexter and he has crazy fast metabolism, he gets lean easily, and that's not the case with Big Ramy. this guy needs to diet like a maniac in order to get shredded, 
and he never really gets shredded. <laughs> so imagine how preps are feeling for him. I'm sure it's a lot of hard work and that kind of hard work really stresses you out. It wears you out. And after doing certain amount of preps, you just burn out. And Big Remy doesn't want to do that. Bodybuilding is very important for him. That's his career. That's how he puts food on his family's table. So he's doing this for a reason. I'm sure of that. I'm sure he has uh, a specific show in mind. Which show is that going to be? We'll see. We'll see. But I'm looking forward to seeing him on stage once again. I just wouldn't feel good if I didn't mention at least one classic physique uh, bodybuilder. And that's going to be Arash Akbar this time around. And I don't know about you guys, but I find this super motivating. Why? Well, because Arash Akbar has been doing bodybuilding for a long time. I think he's like 37 at this point. And he started training like when he was in his early teens. Like when he was 13 or something. And he turned pro in men's physique. And only after he turned pro, naturally he started taking stuff. So it is a lot of work put in this physique. And that's why I find it very motivating. Now he's looking super impressive this time around. He's looking better than ever. I'm telling you, his back looks thicker. His quads look uh, bigger also. I mean, the quad sweep really came up. It's better than ever. His quads really improved. That was his main focus this offseason. And he did it. He really did it. So I really hope he does some damage to Mr. Olympia before the Classic Physique actually started. Back then when there was only rumors, this guy was my favorite Classic Physique guy. But now we have many more. A lot of talent. But Arash, even though he's not new in bodybuilding, he is new in competing. So he has a lot of fuel in his tank. What do you guys think? How will he do it to Mr. Olympia? Anyways, as far as the Open, we have an official scorecard list. And this is really exciting. This really makes it exciting. It means it's real. It's happening in a couple of days. So we have William Bonek, Max Charles, Harry Chopin, Lucas Osladil, Michael Lockett, uh, Mohamed Shaban, Dexter Jackson, Steve Kuklo, Luke Sando, Patrick Moore, Cedric McMillan, Jonathan De La Rosa, Juan Morel, Brandon Curry, Kim Williams, and Rolly Winkler. So this is your 16 best bodybuilders, active bodybuilders in the world today. And these guys are going to clash in a couple of days. Who's going to end up on top of the bunch? We'll see. And who's going to end up at the bottom of it? We'll find out. And yeah, also, if you guys didn't know, digitalmuscle.com is going to be a live webcasting Mr. Olympia. So that's where you can watch it. It's probably going to be horrible quality. I mean, I'm hoping for the best, but uh, YouTube would do a much better job. And these guys just want to promote their website, so that's why it's happening over there. But it's probably going to be horrible quality. By the way, guys, what do you think if I made like an Instagram or YouTube live for the Mr. Olympia to do live commentary. I'm probably not gonna do it, but if I see big interest after this video, if you guys are still here, still watching the video until the end, comment down below, tell me what you think about that idea. It's just an idea. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it. And if you want to see more bodybuilding coverage, content, all kinds of bodybuilding stuff, please subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.